In his film Blow Up, Antonioni argues against metaphysical realism, against the idea that we can know reality the way it is, independent of our existence. It is based on the premise that if we look closer and collect more detail, we will understand reality as a whole. If we would be able to justify the existence of everything we objectify, we would eventually know the nature of reality as it is. But in fact, the opposite happens in the film. Antonioni is trying to show how the promise of the Enlightenment is a false one. After World War II, modern societies became more artificial and unreal, and history seems to have ended. It won't be getting better from now on. The film uses a sarcastic tone and focuses on the tragedy of its historical moment, which is characterized by inability to make sense of the world. Instead of tracing his history as the tragic hero would, in order to know the truth, the protagonist is trying to trace the history of his photograph, an external mnemonic device. He is a photographer who tries to determine whether the dead body that he believes he sees in a photograph he took is actually real, since he has an obsession with documenting the dead. He actually shoots his fashion models as if they are dead. When he does see the dead body in real life, he stops there. He is not after the truth, meaning in finding out who killed the person in the photograph. Soon after, he stops believing in what he sees altogether in real life, as the viewer of the film does as well. The film itself becomes abstract, an idea. Instead of plotting a story, it begins to deal with medium specificity, with the necessary conditions of making a film in the first place, for example, movement. The film then, at some point, reflects on the nature of cinema and argues against its realist presupposition. The protagonist is looking to gain knowledge from his actions throughout the film, but fails to disclose his error. What he fails to recognize is that by photographing women as objects, he contributes to the degradation and objectification of women in the society he is part of. He fails to acknowledge that by objectifying women, he kills female subjectivity and that the objectification of any aspect of modern life is dangerous. The title of the film Blow Up refers not only to the photographic technique of enlarging some parts of a photograph, but also to the blowing up of atom bombs at the end of World War II. The quest for a foundation, for finding the most simple and basic component of reality can lead to blindness to what is and destruction. The atom is a danger to normalcy, the same way other invisible and small entities like guerrilla warfare, hackers and sleeper cells are. A photograph has the ability to celebrate the present, the living, but also to preserve the past, the dead. The protagonist is confronted with the past through the photographs he took, but he refuses to address its significance in the present, and as a result, he begins to lose touch with reality. This is analogous to the way modern society at large refuses to learn from history. People in the 60s, when the film is taking place, were drawn more and more to the anime buying products that distracted them from the truth of everyday reality, to forget their past and the deadly history that overshadowed their public lives. Eventually the protagonist goes crazy, and the invisible, the past, the dead, and meaning as such, comes back to life in a form of auditory hallucination. Instead of seeing in order to believe, he is trying to listen in order to understand, to find meaning in an empty world. In Louder Than Bombs, 
a film by Joaquin Trier, the female protagonist is also a photographer, who begins to doubt the power of the photographic image. She realizes that she fetishized death by taking war pictures, making them fashionable, or that she is taking these photographs because she is depressed and not because she is looking to reveal the truth. But it doesn't matter, because in contemporary life, no one cares about the truth of the photograph anyway. The characters in the film erase the photographs they find, and in effect, they are trying to erase the dead and the past. The film is trying to argue that in contemporary life, we don't care to reveal the truth that photographs or the dead conceal. Instead of caring for the living or the dead, we rather live in an as-like world, the virtual gaming world, or through YouTube videos, as her younger son in the film does. We know from the beginning what happened to her. She died in a car accident. We keep going back to the moment of her death without knowing why it happened. We are supposed to care and try to learn how she died as opposed to the sociopath protagonist in Blow Up who didn't. But as the film unfolds, it seems that asking why people die is a question no one can or cares to answer since everyone is too busy finding a reason to live. At the end of the film, the younger son falls in love and reconnects with life. At that moment, he was able to remember his mother the way she was in real life. The absence of his mother became present only when he begins to fully live life. The films we fall in love with can also resuscitate us. By looking at the screen, we anticipate seeing something genuine in our own eyes, the same way the protagonist in Green Ray, a film by Eric Romer, was looking towards the horizon in order to find it. In almost documentary style, the film follows a woman who is looking for true love after a breakup. She is disappointed with the people she meets while on vacation since they are phony and needy. She is disenchanted with life. She wants to love another human being in the world and she gets her wish in the end. Not only does she meet a man she likes, but her eyes also meet the green ray at sundown, which is a rare phenomenon. There is no chance in the world things were meant to go the way they did. She now can live in harmony with nature. Everything all of a sudden makes sense to her, and she can be seen as she really is, rather than constantly needing to rationalize her decisions or being observed and judged by others. This film invites us to do the same.